This video is sponsored by Clean My Mac X. For a limited time, use the link in the description and the code Dunna Did It to get 30% off your purchase. In the comment sections of a bunch of recent videos, I've been getting asked over and over to do a tutorial on how I do the smooth zoom effect, something like this. Oh yeah. But also you can use this to zoom in on different points if you're doing some kind of a screen share, if you're teaching something, or if you just have anything important anywhere in the frame to show. So in this video, I'm gonna show you two different methods that I use depending on the situation so that you can have this powerful tool for yourself. Secure the cup and let's get into it. Like I mentioned, there are two different methods that I use to do this smooth zoom effect. The first one is the easiest, but it's also the most limited. It works best if you're using it on something where you want to, let's say, zoom in a little bit for a punchline or an important note, but then you're just gonna zoom straight back out to the full frame or even cut after the zoom in. The second method, while still being simple, has a little bit more to it, but allows you to do a lot more with it. This is the method that I use a lot in my tutorials when I want to zoom in on something and then maybe move to some somewhere else in the frame. You can do a lot more with this one, but it does take a little bit more to put it together. All right, let's get into the first method. We're just gonna do a simple little zoom into my face here. So we've got this shot where I'm just thinking here or looking grumpy. We're gonna make sure we're selected on that clip. We're gonna go up into our inspector in the top right. If you're not seeing that, you can click inspector here to open that up. And then right beside where it says zoom, we're gonna click on this keyframe button. And that's going to add a keyframe at that point. And we'll see what that does in a second. Now let's move forward by 10 frames. So I'm just hitting the right key. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And then I'm going to just type in here. So we're gonna go zoom, I'm gonna go 1.3. And then you can see that it zoomed in. You can also see that it added a keyframe here. So it automatically turned that red. Now the catch here is that it's cut off my head. So I haven't zoomed in perfectly on my face. It might be tempting to go into our position and keyframe that as well. So we can click this back arrow to go back to our first keyframe. So we could turn on the position keyframe there and then go back to the second one like that. And then we can use our Y to adjust. Now, right now this looks not bad but it doesn't look like that nice smooth kind of zoom like what you saw earlier. So the way that we get that smooth zoom is by adding a bezier or an ease in and ease out of our keyframes. And there are a couple of ways to do this. The first way is that you can go to your clip and you can click here to show your splines. And I'm gonna have to make some more room so we can see this. Now if we zoom in here a bunch, you can see that this is a perfectly straight line. So what we can do to make these kind of ease in and ease out is we can click on the first one and click this ease out button. So you see how it has the little curve instead of the straight line. So we're gonna click that and then we can click on the next one and we want it to ease in. And so now instead of it being a straight line from point A to point B, it's this nice curve. And so we'll see that it changed a lot. But what we just saw there is actually the problem with using the position to fine tune where the zoom is happening to. So if we watch that again, you can see that it bounced down first and then back up. And so we got a little black bar at the top and we don't want that. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and reset this whole thing by hitting this button up in the top right. We're gonna go back to frame one, keyframe our zoom. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're gonna go 1.3 again. And right now the zooms are linked. So whatever I do on the Y, it's gonna happen to the X. If you don't have that, you're gonna zoom and stretch out your frame all weird. So we want those linked. And then instead of using position to move where we zoomed into, we're actually gonna use this anchor point. So I'm gonna go to Y on the anchor point and I'm gonna drop that down to kind of where I want it. And the interesting thing about using the anchor point as your positioning is that you don't actually have to keyframe it either. As you zoom back out, it automatically goes back to the right framing. So if we play this, we've got a zoom into the right place again. And then if we want to add that ease in, we can click here again, we've got our zoom. This time it shows zoom Y, I'm not sure why. We're gonna click on the first one, click ease out. Click on the second one, ease in, and then it looks like this. There we go, now we've got that nice zoom in. The other thing that you can do is once you've got your ease in and ease out here, you can click on the point and then it gives you a spline point here so you can actually mess with how that transition happens. So if let's say we wanted it to go a little bit further than the zoom and then come back, we can push this up a little bit. Now it'll look something like this kind of bouncy. Most of the time, I don't actually go to the splines down here anyway. So now we're back to our 
straight linear zoom. The way that I do it is I'll go to my first keyframe here and then I right click on the red keyframe and I hit ease out. Then I click this little dot to go to the next one and I right click again and go ease in and it automatically made that for me. So if I open that back up, you can see it's got the ease out and ease in, and we've got that nice smooth zoom. So really quickly, just to show you how simple this is and how quick it can be, I'll go to frame one, I'll hit keyframe, I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, I'll go 1.3, and then I'll fix my anchor point, and right click, ease in, go back to the first one, right click, ease out, and I'm done. And then if you wanted to zoom back out afterwards, you could just put a keyframe where you want that zoom out to start. So let's say we wanted to go there. So we're gonna keyframe there. And we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I like to do 10, do whatever feels right for you. And we're gonna go back to one. And again, because we use the anchor point instead of the position, we don't actually have to change anything. We're gonna go again, right click, ease in, go back to the previous one, ease out. Now we've got this zoom in and zoom out. Now the question happens, what if we want to zoom into somewhere and then zoom to another spot and then zoom to a third spot and then zoom back out? This definitely gets a little bit more involved, but I promise it's still easy. But before I get into that second method, my MacBook is running a little sluggish right now. So I wanna show you guys Clean My Mac and thank them for sponsoring this video. I've been a Clean My Mac user for years now. So when they reached out and asked me to share with you, it was a no brainer. This is Clean My Mac X and the beauty of it is just how simple and powerful it is, the main way that you can use it is their smart scan feature. When you hit scan, it looks through your whole computer for any junk files that you don't need so you can delete and free up space. It finds any kind of protection problem, so if you have any malware or anything like that, and then it looks for anything that it can do to speed up the processes of your Mac. So as you can see with mine, it found almost six gigabytes of stuff to delete, no threats, and it's gonna do three things to improve the speed of my computer. The average user cleans up more than 60 gigabytes bytes of data off their computer every year. And while it is just that easy to run the smart scan, there's also so much more that you can do with it. They've got a whole list of different functions. And one of my favorites is up in my top bar, Clean My Mac X lives up there and I can go up and free up memory when I find that my computer's getting a little bit sluggish. So for any of the Mac users out there, I recommend Clean My Mac X so much. And right now for a limited time, if you use the link down in the description and the code Dunna did it, you're gonna get 30% off of your life. License. Huge thank you to Clean My Mac for sponsoring this video. In order to do the second and more powerful method of this, we're going to need an adjustment clip. So to get an adjustment clip, we're gonna go to Effects, go to Toolbox, and we can just search for Adjustment. Now I'm gonna drag this over the clip that I want to apply this zoom on. You can technically do this straight on the clip, but I find it way more handy with the adjustment clip, and I'll show you why in a little bit. So we're gonna grab our adjustment clip and just drag it out so it's the whole length of the clip that we want to perform form the zoom on. Then we're going to click the adjustment clip, right click and open in fusion page. And I know that fusion is scary, but I promise this is simple. All we're gonna do is click on media in here. We're going to hit shift and space bar and we're going to type in transform. We'll use this transform XF and we'll just click add. Now it put it between media in and media out. If it didn't happen, you just need to connect it up like this by dragging these lines around. Now, let's say in this clip, all we wanna do is we want to zoom in on the middle section where something is happening in the middle of this screen. But then once that thing is gone, you see the cursor moves over to the left-hand side of the screen. So we're gonna wanna zoom into the middle and then move over to the left. We're gonna go to transform, create a keyframe on size. Then we're gonna go over by 10 frames. So we're gonna go right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I'm gonna zoom in to two times. It automatically created another keyframe. And because we want to zoom directly into the middle, we don't have to do anything with the center or pivot. And then all we wanna do is create that smooth ease in and ease out. And the way that we do that is we're going to open up our spline. So that's up here and it's gonna show down here. We're gonna click the zoom to fit button. So that's gonna show us all of our different keyframes. I'm gonna drag over top of the two keyframes so that it selected both of them. And then all I'm gonna do is hit S. Now, if we go back to the start, we can see it created that smooth zoom. One of the nice things that you can do with this one too, if you go into the settings under transform, you can also add motion blur, which makes it look a little bit more realistic. If you crank the quality up to 10, obviously it will have the most quality. 
So now you've got that little bit of motion blur if that's something that's really important to you. So it actually looks like a camera is zooming in towards the subject. This does bog down the computer a little bit. So most of the time, especially when I'm doing tutorial stuff like this, I just don't worry about it and I leave it off. Now we're gonna find the point in the middle where we need to go over to the left hand side. So you can see that dialogue box goes away and then the cursor goes over to the left. So we're gonna follow it, so maybe starting right about there. We're gonna put a keyframe on our size and we're also gonna put a keyframe on our center. And we're gonna go over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Then I'm gonna use, you can either use the controls over in your inspector here or you can drag this box in the middle. I find it a little bit easier just to use the controls over in the inspector. So I'm gonna use my center X, maybe center Y a little bit. And then what the heck, let's zoom in a little bit more, 2.5 times. Okay, so we've got our linear move like that. Move that down a little bit. The dialog box pops up lower than I thought. And then down in our spline box, we're gonna hit zoom to fit again. Now here's our first move and here's our second move, but because in the first move we didn't change the center point at all, we only had the one thing to do. In this case, we've got our zoom and our center point down here. So we're just gonna highlight all four of those points and we're gonna hit S. And now we've got a nice smooth zoom. After that's done, it goes over to the left-hand side. Now let's do this quickly one more time. I wanna show you why I think using the adjustment clip instead of doing it straight on the clip is the better option. So let's go back to our first clip, but we're gonna do a little bit more with it. So what I wanna do with this shot is I'm looking grumpy. I wanna zoom in on my face, looking a little confused, and then over to smooth, and then over to zoom, and then back out. So one of the beauties of doing it with an adjustment clip is that we can put the adjustment clip over top of all of those things so that it'll zoom in and zoom on the text as well. Right click that, open infusion page. I'm gonna do this a little quicker so that you can just see how I would handle it. Right about there, we're gonna go center and size. Go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm gonna zoom in to two. About there. Make it so I can see it. Hit S, and we're gonna move over. Bam. That's the point I want it to land. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten to the left. And then we're gonna make a keyframe there. Then go back to our landing point, change our center, maybe even zoom out just a little bit, 1.7. We're gonna smooth that one. And we're gonna do the same thing. There's the start of the move, so I'm gonna hit key point there. I'm probably not going to have to change the size, but just in case, I'm going to make a key point or a keyframe there. 7, 8, 9, 10 happens to work pretty nicely. There we go. I'm going to make another keyframe on the size just in case. I'm going to smooth those out. Right where I start to move, I'm going to make another keyframe. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm going to go back to 1, and 0.5, and 0.5, which is back to normal. We're gonna smooth those out. And what the heck, let's do some motion blur on that. Crank it up. And then we've got this. So that is how I do my smooth zoom effect in my video, something you guys have been asking me to do a tutorial on for quite a while now. If I went over anything too quickly and you've got questions, make sure to leave them down in the comment section below and I'll do my best to try and help you out down there. And on your way down there, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on future videos. Huge thanks to Clean My Mac X for sponsoring this video. Huge thank you to you for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs>